Hello and welcome to the Three Will Podcast. This is your host, Danny Ryan, and I have Pete Skelly and Kirk Lamone here with me, two of the attendees of the Microsoft Ignite conference from last week. And we've done zero prep for this, right guys? That is correct. Oh, That's correct. This this is what this is how I like to roll. This is how I like to roll. Um, I I just wanted to, to talk with you guys just to sort of maybe just decompress from from last week, which um, I spent a lot of time at the booth, so I didn't wasn't in in the any of the sessions. Um, but I just wanted to uh, talk with you guys about some of the things that you learned last week. Um, if you've got insights, that's great. I'm still, I imagine you're still processing a lot of things from last week. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. <laughs> a lot to take in. Yes, for sure. There's a, there's a lot of sessions I wanted to see that I didn't see and hopefully I'll get to get to some of those, um, you know, online. And so you have, you have access to those, uh, after the conference. Uh, yeah, I think everyone does for, for most, many of the sessions at least. Okay. And um, so what were the, well, first off, overall impressions of the conference what, it, what at a high level? Try to uh, say something that I would understand, uh, <laughs> that sort of level. Um, overall impressions of the, the conference and anything that you're, you really sort of took away from the entire week. Uh, got exercise. Good. <laughs> exercise is good. You got your, your steps There's on your there, Fitbit? Yes, yeah. There, I mean, um, I thought the venue actually was great. Um, I've been to uh, been been to the Georgia World Congress Center before. I don't think I've been to um, a conference that took over all three parts uh, of, of the World Congress Center, but uh, but it was I thought it was uh, it was pretty well done um, from that standpoint. Yeah, I would say given given the size of that conference, the number of attendees. You know, there were a lot of complaints about the venue, but that's uh, it's a very challenging thing to do to get corral 25,000 people. So, uh, you know, they're really well run. I thought they did a good job of splitting up sort of uh, across the three buildings. There's three buildings in the World Congress Center and splitting up things that were kind of office related into, I think it was A for the most part. Uh, a lot of infrastructure things were in uh, C. So it's kind of kind of kept you at least in one spot for the day. So at least they tried to keep you in one of the buildings because I know, you know, if, if you made a mistake and showed up to the wrong building, that could be a very painful situation. <laughs> it cost yeah. you an hour. It could yeah. cost you an hour. <laughs> yes, I think one of the best tips I got, uh, the pro tip for if you're ever at the Georgia World Congress Center, is that you can get from, what is it, B to C through a little tunnel area. That tunnel area saved me a lot of time. If they have it open. Yeah. If they have it open, <laughs> yes. Which they, they did during the day, but in, not in the early morning. In the early mornings, if you had one of the E's on, well, I had an exhibitor pass. It wasn't just an E, but uh, they would let you through then. But um, it was one of the very rare situations where an exhibitor got was able to get in and others were not. But... Uh, um, so what, what, how many, so you probably, I know you planned out the week and wanted to get, uh, hit a lot of sessions. Were you able to hit 50% of them? What was, what sort of, what was the rough number? 20%, 10%? Yeah, 10. 10%. Of the, I mean, I hit, I mean, I, 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 I didn't miss any sessions. Okay. I was, I was quadruple and more booked when I first created my plan for the week and I had to pull things out and then just uh, narrow it down to one or two and then decide at the last minute on some of those. What were any of your favorite sessions that you attended? Uh, well, I got one I can mention real quick and Pete can then go. Uh, so, I, I, you know, most of mine were technical sessions, but one of my favorite actually was not a technical session. It was um, what's new in the um, SharePoint document libraries. I forget the exact title. I'll try and come up with it here. Um, Review SharePoint document libraries, what's new, what's coming, and when to use what. Mm -hmm. I thought that was uh, fabulous. I learned a lot out of that um, as a user. Um, so I, I thought that was good. There were several technical ones as well that I enjoyed. Yeah, I'd, I'd have to say one really good technical talk um, that was kind of out of the typical realm for me was a document DB talk. Um, and then uh, one of the more enjoyable talks was Scott Scott Hanselman on the first day. Um, both Kirk and I attended that. It was kind of fun. 
Nice. Yeah, I got I got a lot out of um, a few that I went to around uh, flow um, and power apps uh, and logic apps, and uh, I, I think those are things I want to explore more. Just haven't had a chance to yet. Did you do? Were you able to do any of like the hands-on labs or anything like that? Were you able to to get any time to, to go do that? I know it's that's a lot to ask. Yeah, I, I certainly did not. I mean, between attending conference the the actual ses- sessions and trying to kind of network with some folks, um, that that was probably the biggest negative of the of the venue mm-hmm. was it was so big that you didn't really have time to kind of get to a hands on lab, get back to another session that you might want to attend or, or kind of meet up with folks. So, yeah. so I, I guess I guess you didn't weren't able to get any certifications while you. Were... <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, yeah, there were some. That at first, were that's around. a dumb question. That's a dumber question. So, <laughs> go, what were you saying, Kirk? There, there were some actually that were around getting certifications for a certain test or something, mm-hmm. passing a certain test, but I didn't go to any of those. But, um, you know, the closest I got to hands-on labs were when we were, um, maybe a session I was at for, say, the uh, Graph API, and and I had my laptop open and was hitting the endpoints at the mm-hmm. same time they were doing the session. That's about as close as I got. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I heard you were mentioned on the Twitter. <laughs> I heard you were... <laughs> there was one, yeah, there was one session I went to where they mentioned at the beginning, oh, you can use this hashtag if you're tweeting. So I, I, you know, I tweeted a few times and uh, during that session and others, and then the demo they had showed the most recent tweets, I guess, organized by user, and there my name was. So, so I took a picture of that and then tweeted that picture to show that I had made the demo. But, how, uh, how meta, Kirk? <laughs> it was. How totally meta. <laughs> I forget which session that was, though. <laughs> it was earlier in the week, though. So tell me what the plan is from here, now that you guys have... It seemed like um, you you know you you tried to go after what you could could during the week and it was a really packed uh, full week. Um, what's the plan right now to sort of to take what you um, sort of the content that's out there and and uh, share it with people inside of Three Will? So we've got uh, a session tomorrow planned where we're going to go through and compare notes. So Kirk and I uh, attended, for the most part, different sessions. And we had a couple that were the same session that were kind of critical to what we do at Three Will. Um, But we're going to kind of go through and plan out uh, some potential lunch and learns that we'll do internally. Uh, and then maybe a, a recommended list of things that we didn't get to attend that we might want folks to watch or things that people could, to, could uh, kind of do on their own time as well. Nice. Very nice. And um, I guess with regards to, did you spend any time at all in the expo and learn anything from anybody in the expo? Yeah. I mean, we, uh, not a lot for me. Yeah. <laughs> but I was there from time to time. Number one, there are also little, little theater sessions there. Uh huh. Um, usually late in the day, like 5 30 or 6 p.m. I went to a couple of those. Those were kind of more fun ones for me, like one was an IoT one. Um, but there was another one that was related to uh, migration. But I, I did spend a little bit of time with the booth, talked to a couple people uh, at the booth we had there. Um, you know, uh, spent some time at Metalogics and talking to them a little mm-hmm. bit. Good. You, did you, were you able to see Contently? Yes, for, uh, for a short period of time, yes. Awesome. Very cool. Now, I just did a podcast a week or so ago with Lane about Angular 2. Was there any Angular 2 yeah. stuff at the conference? Oh, yeah. Uh, we both, that was one of the sessions that both Kirk and I attended was uh, a session by John Papia, Papa on Angular 2 and TypeScript, um, which I think, I know Lane had mentioned, you know, he's kind of bought into Angular and uh, TypeScript or Angular 2 and TypeScript. Um, to me, I think it's just a matter of time. That makes so much more sense, that model between TypeScript and Angular 2, um, the changes in sort of the, the API, if you will, some of the tool chain for .NET developers. Uh, it's going to be a learning curve if you haven't done it yet. Um, you know, some of the things like Gulp and, and trying to use uh, some of the module loader technology and some of the new constructs for TypeScript and the way Angular 2 changed. 
Um, but it's definitely going to be, it's, it's more enterprise grade, let's put it that way. Um, the interesting thing in that talk to me, I don't know about Kirk, but uh, John Papa kind of went through and looked at some statistics overall for uh, some of the frameworks and competing frameworks in Angular uh, 1, Angular 2, and React. And, you know, the, the closest follower uh, doesn't even register uh, in comparison to those three. Mm -hmm. uh, so as far as choosing, you know, if I'm going to learn something, does it have legs? Is it going to stand the test of time? Certainly React is up there. Uh, SharePoint Framework's using it. So, uh, and so does, you know, a lot of other groups internally in Microsoft, apparently. Mm -hmm. Uh, but if you're going to choose something, Angular 1 still has a huge following, mm -hmm. but Angular 2 already, it was only released, what, three weeks ago, uh, yeah. already has, I think, 647,000 uh, downloads. I don't remember. Uh, it, it, was, it was a fairly big number considering two weeks uh, being, you know, kind of RTM'd, if you will, or, or a full release for 2.0. So I'm already using it on the 3 com site. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. how cutting edge I am. No, I could be using it. I have no idea if I am or not. <laughs> if somebody else out there built some sort of plugin that's using it, then yes, I am. But I have no idea. React. I don't think I've talked to anybody about React. What is that at, at a high level? Yeah, uh, maybe Tim Tim has touched it, I thought. Did mm -hmm. he talk about React? I, I don't know if he talked to you about it. But <laughs> it wasn't me, I don't Tim. think. I usually remember the uh, acronyms or the names of yeah, I think different Facebook things. created it. Okay. Um, they, or they certainly use it heavily. And it's, um, it's less uh, opinionated, I guess, is the word, than Angular. So it's a lot easier for... Um, I haven't used it, so Pete can probably talk to it better than I can. But I'll just mention that that one reason that the SharePoint framework uses it is because you can kind of use your own framework on top of it. Okay. Where it would be harder to use another framework on top of Angular. Um, yeah. So that's one reason to use React if you're going to be a framework for others. And I think we just found a podcast for Tim. Ah, so the next one, yeah. I'll, I'll put that down that he can talk about React. <laughs> Assuming he's using, I guess he's using it on his project now. Mm-hmm. I, or he has used it. He has so used it. Yep. So yep. is it a UI framework then? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yep. Excellent. He, Excellent. Yet another JavaScript framework. Yet another <laughs> JavaScript framework. <laughs> Have you created your own JavaScript frameworks yet? No. All the cool kids are doing it, man. <laughs> They're all doing it. Um, uh, congratulations, Kirk and Pete. You guys won an award. And Will Holland. And Will yeah. Holland. Um, much respect. And uh, Rob for, was helping too. And Rob. Anybody else you want to throw in? Your, um, any? That's good enough. Okay. You don't want to mention your wife or children? <laughs> My no? fifth grade teacher. Your fifth grade teacher. <laughs> Excellent. That's well, well done. For innovation. Oh, who would have thought? For innovation. Yeah. That's awesome. Thanks to you and Pete for writing that award up. <laughs> and this, was, this was for a project where you had basically built upon this was for the, the award was for metalogics for so for folks who uh, don't know what happened um, they were they had a um, meta heroes award um, where they were recognizing people in the community who had done different things like um, uh, there was one of the awards was for innovation which was what Kirk and the team got um, and we nominated him for a project where they basically you built on content matrix sort of as a framework and we built out our own sort of custom solution on that yeah we automated the uh, copying of content from one environment to another and automated the triage and the scheduling and uh, all sorts of things around it multiple node management so scheduling multiple content man uh, content matrix instance running uh, mm -hmm. jobs across multiple nodes in Azure I'm ready to use that again very soon. Awesome. Very soon. We are on the lookout. Um, anything else? Yeah, I guess the uh, party-wise, we, we were able to go to the MetaFest party, I know. Mm -hmm. At least some of us were there. Um, some of us were there later than others. Uh, these things, these conferences wear me down. So always by the, you know, close to the end of the week, I'm coming down with a cold or not feeling well. Um, but, uh, so I wasn't able to make it the last night to the final festival. I think 
Tommy was the only one that made it. Tommy that. was yeah. the only one who made it. Okay, well, yeah. hey. I was, I was going to, but I didn't know if anyone else was going, so I okay. just I took off. Every, everybody put the L to your forehead. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we didn't make it through the week. We can't. Well, I, I, I would have shown up if U2 was playing there. <laughs> I would have definitely have been there, but I uh, heard U2 couldn't make it, so uh, I ended up going home and sleeping heavily. That's a fact. Yeah, same here. <laughs> Catching up on from the week. Boy, I was exhausted. But uh, anything, any final words before we wrap this up? Um, I think probably the biggest takeaway for me as far as Office 365 and SharePoint was concerned mm -hmm. is SharePoint seems to be back if it ever left. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, you know, Some folks would say the popularity or at least the, the buzz from Microsoft's messaging was waning in the last two years, uh, but certainly with Jeff Teeper's return um, and some of the innovations that they're uh, coming out with as far as the SharePoint framework, um, really kind of doubling down on the group's integration uh, within Office 365 and on-prem, uh, the changes that they're making with SharePoint 2016 on-prem and sort of the feature feature pack releases or, or feature releases. Um, I'm, I'm kind of excited about both Office 365 and, and SharePoint 2016 on-prem now. It's, and, and that was waning in the last couple of years. Um, I will say this, I think their one message needs to be tightened up as far as the enterprise content management. Yeah. Um, things around, you know, the story around customization for the SharePoint framework groups, um, how it integrates with Flow and Power Apps and Power BI and those types of things is really compelling story during Ignite. Um, but I think some of the things that are lacking as far as why is why was SharePoint so popular in the first place um, are really the ECM functionality and its enterprise capabilities. Yeah. And one of the things that, that I didn't hear much of and, and tried to have several conversations around was that ECM story of what is going to be the story around, uh, you know, uh, content types and managed metadata and those types of things, given all the changes that they're making. Um, some, some real good, some not so good with the UI and the new document library experience and those types of things. So um, I would just say it's exciting to see SharePoint come back, uh, you know, in the forefront again. SharePoint, it's back, baby. Yeah. And there was <laughs> I'm back, um, baby. Someone sent out a, someone tweeted, and it got retweeted several times. Um, uh, a graphic that showed the um, what uh, what words were or what tags were used the most in the conference, and SharePoint was the largest by far. So well, they they were ahead of Azure, I think. They were ahead of everything. But um, I think in the end they finished like second or third. Oh, but they? the first two uh, days okay. was all SharePoint. Yeah, John. It was John White. Um, if you if you just Google John White and Power BI, the first couple of slides that'll come up or things that'll come up will be ignite okay. references at this point. I would imagine. So. Well, thank you. I appreciate you guys taking the time just to sort of decompress here and talk about the week and um, look forward to. Uh, sharing lots of this uh, crunchy goodness from the conference with everybody else here at Three Will. Um, it's great to hear that there is a renewed focus in on SharePoint. I think we all are excited about that. That's wonderful to hear. Um, and I just thank you for taking the time to do this. Thank you everyone for listening and have a wonderful day. Thank you. Bye-bye.